everybody. Welcome to Daily Devotions with David, or 3D, as we like to go height, depth, and width, and deep. Today we are going to go a little deeper today. There's going to be some things I'm going to share that we know for sure and things that we don't know for sure. I'd like you to turn to Matthew chapter 27. We're looking today at what happened between the time of Jesus breathing his last and rising from the dead. What happened during that time period? What happened during those three days? And uh, some of this is crystal clear. Some of it is not as clear. It reminds me of a time when I heard Dave Johnson preach on, uh, he was doing something at Church of the Open Door in Minneapolis on the end times and different views of the end times. And he, he gave like seven views of the end times. And he said, now this is the view I take. Now turn to your neighbor and say, he might be wrong. <laughs> and so we're not sure about some things. Frankly, I'm comfortable with mystery because... I love that God is so big and huge and complex and we'll never know everything. I believe that the uh, joy of eternity in heaven is going to be that we continually get to know more about God, even through eternity. It won't be boring. It's not like we're going to know everything right away. I mean, we're going to have our eyes open. We're going to go from black and white to color, so to speak. But the joy and the adventure of heaven is we'll continually forever and ever and ever get to know more about God, his beauty, his awesomeness, the complexities of salvation and all of that. Well, that's a different devotional. Today we're in Matthew 27. And um, uh, we're going to look again at what happened between the time of Jesus' death and resurrection. And you want to take notes today probably because I'm going to give you some scriptures that we won't have time to go to, but you can go to to go deeper Matthew 27, 50, and Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. So at that point, he physically died. Verse 51, behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. So one thing that happened is the temple, the curtain was torn in two. It was a huge, thick piece of cloth that separated the Holy of Holies from the other part of the temple. Only the high priest could go in once a year with the blood of a lamb. Jesus died during Passover, which was hugely symbolic and prophetic. And then here we have Jesus breathes his last, veil of the temple's torn, and they were probably freaking out because now it showed that anybody who comes to faith in Jesus can go into the Holy of Holies, can have fellowship with God. We know from Hebrews it says, come boldly to the throne of grace by the blood of Jesus. And I love the scene in the Passion of the Christ when he dies and the veil is torn and the priests are freaking out. Because before that, only the high priest could go in and they'd have a, a, a rope tied to his ankle so that if he died, they'd pull him out. Because if they went in and they hadn't done everything pure, they'd be stricken dead. This was the place where only the pure and righteous could enter. We are pure and righteous in Jesus. If you put your faith in Christ, you're covered by the blood of the Lamb. The Passover Lamb's blood applied to the doorpost of your heart. You can come into the Holy of Holies perfect fellowship with God, knowing you're clean in his sight. That is the gospel, beloved. That's the good news. And this was powerful that it literally occurred at the moment he breathed his last. Then it says, curtain of the temple torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. So there was an earthquake, it looks like. The power of God manifested. Physical manifestation of the power of God at the very moment Jesus breathed his last. And I love that scene in the Passion of the Christ. Tear comes from heaven, hits the earth. Jesus on the cross, it splits the rocks, goes down into hell, and the demons are screaming in defeat. You know, I love that scene. And so here it says the, the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened. Oh, folks, I would love to see it, to have seen this. Matter of fact, one of my theories of heaven is uh, one of the adventures of being with God forever is we're going to be able to say, God, I want to I relive the scene where you're walking on water. And then, boom, you're there. And you actually are in the boat and you see it. I believe this. Now, I don't have a scripture for it. So, again, I've said we're going to say some things today that are true and some things that are maybe speculative. This is speculative, but I'm still going to believe it. And I want, to, I want to relive this scene. I want to say I want to be at, in Jerusalem when Jesus breathed his last. And I want to see that earthquake and, and see those rocks split. And then this is the really awesome part. Many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep. That's a phrase for death. 
that, 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 that when you fall asleep, you're, you're, it's like your body looks as if it's asleep. Your body's dead. Your spirit's still alive, either at that time, Hades or heaven. Um, and, 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 and it says the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. <laughs> when Jesus breathes his last, the bodies of Old Testament saints who are justified by faith, Abraham and others, rise. Now, what do they do between this moment and what's said in verse 23? We don't know. Maybe they just hung out and gave high fives and said, well, this is awesome, the fulfillment of all the prophecies we believed and preached. Because verse 53 says, and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So they, they were raised, they, the, 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 they, their bodies were raised at this moment, but then they didn't go and preach in the holy city, Jerusalem, and appear to many until after the resurrection, because then they were going to proclaim the full victory of Jesus. <laughs> the, these Old Testament saints, they're, 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 they get their new body, and, and after the resurrection, they go and they preach to people, this Jesus whom you crucified is the Messiah. He's risen from the dead. You better believe in him. He's the one we've waited for. Now, so again, their bodies were, were raised. They came out of the tombs. After the resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. What did they do between this time and, and I don't know, they, they maybe just hung out and waited and said, okay, they're like, they're like stallions at the starting gate of a race. Just open the gate, resurrection. We're going into the holy city to preach the gospel. All right, so this is stuff, most of which, uh, except for what happened between these, the, the, the time that these Old Testament saints were raised, uh, I've shared things we know. We know this happened but between the time he breathed his last and he rose from the dead. Now, let's go to another passage that's key. Uh, 1 Peter 3, 18 to 20. Man, the birds are even getting fired up out here. They're getting all excited as we talk about Jesus and what happened. You hear them, they're just going, they're, they're proclaiming the glory of God. 1 Peter 3, 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous. He was the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God. Had to be a perfect Lamb to meet the satisfaction of a holy God for the redemption of our uh, lives and, and the forgiveness of sins. That he might bring us to God. I talked about this yesterday. Okay, the bridge diagram. Now look at this. Being put to death in the flesh. That's when he breathed his last. Made alive in the spirit. Listen. His body died, his spirit never died. Remember he told the thief, today you'll be with me in paradise? So Jesus' body was dead, but his spirit never died, just like our spirit never dies. When you die, your spirit either goes to be with the Lord, or you're forever separated from God in hell. Verse 19. Now this is the part that is so uncertain, but it's pretty exciting. I'm going to give you my view on this, but again, turn to the person next to you if you're with somebody and say, he might be wrong. Verse 19. In which he went, Jesus went, from the time he was put to death in the flesh, and proclaimed to the spirits in prison. What does this mean that Jesus went and preached to the spirits in prison? I'll give you my theory in a minute. Because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared. All right. These spirits who are in prison, I believe, are exceptionally bad demons. You got bad demons and you got really bad demons. I believe these are really bad demons who, and it says they did something during the time of Noah before the flood. So here's where you got to go do study on your own. I wish we had 30 minutes, but we don't. Go to Genesis 6, 2 to 8. Genesis 6, 2 to 8. The sons of God had sex with the women and gave birth to the Nephilim, or the giants. I believe those sons of God were these really bad demons who had rebelled, not only were thrown out of heaven when Satan and, and a third of the angels were cast out, but they rebelled against authority to a different degree. They didn't even want the rank they were given as fallen angels or demons. They wanted even more authority than they should have had as fallen angels or demons, and they, they, they came into men, impregnated women, and those women gave birth to these Nephilim or these giants. And it said it so angered God that he brought the flood to the earth. Now, again, that's a little speculative. That's my theory. So I believe these are those really bad demons. 
And if you go to 2 Peter 2, 4 to 10, you'll get a little more insight. And go to Ephesians 4, 8 to 10, where it says Jesus ascended, descended. That ties in with this as well. But here's what I believe. I believe these spirits that Jesus went and preached to were these really, really bad demons who were held up by God in this prison, spirits in prison. They weren't, they're so bad, they're not even allowed now to be in the air or the atmosphere. Because now you have some demons that are in the air and the atmosphere, Ephesians 6 speaks of. But these were so bad because of what they had done in impregnating these women by coming into men at that time that that was never going to happen again. God was never going to allow these Nephilim creatures to be born by that method, method. Therefore, he put them in prison. These are the worst of the demons. And Jesus, between the time he breathed his last and rose from the dead, I believe this says he went and preached to them. What did he preach to them? He preached to them that you're defeated. I now have the keys of hell and death, and your upper hand due to sin not being fully atoned for forever has been taken away from you because I've now fully paid for sin. And, I, and that's why I love that scene in The Passion of the Christ when, when Jesus breathes his last again. I mentioned earlier, teardrop comes, you go down into hell, and the demons down there are just screaming in defeat because of what Jesus did. Now, one more passage. Let's go to Colossians 2, and I think we get a little more insight into this. Colossians chapter 2. Verse 13, and you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. That's what allows us into the Holy of Holies, the veil torn, what we looked at earlier. By canceling the record of debt that stood against, to us, stood against us with his legal demands. This is the record of debt that was put over a person when they uh, were either uh, imprisoned or crucified. They would put their offense over them. And it would say, guilty, guilty. This is what they did. They deserve this punishment. And it says, and he put our sins on, our sins were put on Jesus. Thus he set it aside, nailing it to the cross. Everything you've ever done that's offended God was nailed to Jesus at the cross. And then it says, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them through the cross. When I believe Jesus went and proclaimed to those spirits or demons in hell or, or in, in that holding in prison, he was proclaiming that you are defeated, you are now disarmed. Satan's not annihilated until he's thrown the lake of fire forever, and that's coming, hallelujah. But in the meantime, he's been disarmed. His upper hand of sin and condemnation and bringing the accusations against you if you're in Christ is gone. He's been disarmed. He's been stripped. You have authority over Satan. You have victory, no condemnation because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. So here it is, beloved, the lesson today. Jesus' death defeated sin. It defeated wrath and judgment and condemnation that could come against us. It defeated death. We'll look at that tomorrow. It, it defeated Satan all for you and me. We can come to the Holy of Holies. We can be reconciled to God. We have access to the very presence of God through the blood of Jesus each and every day if you've received, received Christ. Satan's defeated, and tomorrow we're going to look at icing on the cake where he sealed the deal through his resurrection. This is great news, folks, and uh, how exciting that our God became a man, died a cruel death, was flogged, spit upon, rejected, ridiculed, took our sin, took the wrath of God for you and me that we would not have to. And that is the great promise that when he said it is finished, paid in full. Redemption's available. Receive him today if you haven't. If you have, rejoice. Meditate on the victory that we have because of what he did at the cross. And tomorrow, we celebrate the greatest event in all of human history. The event that took a man named Josh McDowell from a skeptic to a believer. The event that convinced Lee Strobel, an investigative crime journalist with the Chicago paper, it took him from an atheist to a bold proclaimer of Jesus Christ. It's the event that transformed Peter's life. It's the event that's transformed my life and can transform your life. We'll look at that tomorrow. Now, Living Hope Church family, today we're doing a food drive. 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock today in the upper gravel lot outside of our house of prayer. Bring some non-perishable food items. Put them in the trunk of your car. Drive up. Pop the trunk. People will grab them. They'll be keeping the distance. They're doing all the COVID-19 stuff for sanitation. 
And that will go to people in need. This is a great way for us to be the body of Christ, reach out to the needy, and we're excited to do that today from 1 to 4. Now, tomorrow is Easter Sunday. I'm going to be preaching from Romans chapter 8. How cool again that our study of Romans puts us exactly at a place that's appropriate for what we're going through. It mentions his death and resurrection in the end of Romans 8, and it says this is proof that nothing can separate us from the love of God. So I have the privilege tomorrow at 11 o'clock, live stream, watch us, to preach on the love of God. Five characteristics of the love of God found right there at the end of Romans 8. Now, one more thing I want to ask the Living Hope Church family to do. Uh, send me pictures. Um, DavidHolt08 at gmail.com. Most of you have my cell number. If you don't, uh, email me a picture. I want to see how, how you celebrate with your family. Maybe you guys all get dressed up and in the living room to watch the live stream. I love seeing that stuff. Somebody sent me a picture last week. They have three children under the age of five. They're banging on things and playing drums during the worship. We're doing the service tomorrow in our chapel so that Jeff Wren can play that beautiful grand piano. We're featuring some of our other musicians who are going to be uh, playing from their place, and we're piping that in. It's going to be awesome. So tomorrow we celebrate the greatest event. If you're not a part of a church, we invite you to Living Hope Church, 11 o'clock live stream tomorrow. And uh, you guys have a great day. Dee Dee. Yes. You haven't said anything. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I love to see the pictures too, but I love, I love it when y'all post your pictures on social media and tag Living Hope. Oh, yeah. How do they do so, that? Um, well, if you have Instagram, you can tag, oh gosh, I think Living, Living Hope, Hope Athens. Athens. Yeah. If you're not following, follow on Living Hope Athens and then David or tag David on um, David Holt. What's your Instagram? I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know um, either. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's DT Holt. Well, you know what? Anyway. We need to give y'all that information. But I'll, yeah, I'll just put, tag. I'll post it in the comments. Find it. You can find Living Hope on social media. And By the way, everybody that in Wisconsin it. loves your voice. And when you say y'all, and you just said y'all. Hey, so. y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mary Johnson. <laughs> Yeah, it's so Hi, great. Hi, Wendy. Huge shout out. So many in Wisconsin watching, so many. Hi, in Eve. Uganda. Love my Uganda. Sherry. And my African Sherry. brothers and sisters. Uh, such a joy. You guys, what a cool Sandy. way. Sandy. Stay. Oh. <laughs> Keep talking. Y'all. Everybody loves to hear Dee's voice. <sighs> All right. Love you guys. Let me pray for you so you'll have a great day today. Father, we praise you in Jesus' name. All that was accomplished by Jesus at, the, at Calvary. We just pause right now to say, Jesus, we are eternally grateful for your life, your teachings, your miracles, your death, and your resurrection. And God, I pray with all my heart, I cry out to you to save people today who are lost all over the world during this quarantine, during this COVID-19. Would you pour out your spirit upon those who don't know you, that they would find their way to devotionals like this, to videos. They watch The Chosen, which is an awesome eight-episode series that you would use the Internet, use this means to reach people all over the world. Your word says that everybody will hear the gospel, and then the end will come. This could usher that in. We don't know, but we want to be ready. We want to have our lamps burning. We don't know the day or the hour, but we want to be ready should you return today that you had found us worthy that you would find us ready and excited and living for you. And bless them the pure in heart, they will see God. Give us pure hearts, clean hands out of love for you that we live for you and seek you and, and witness for you to others. God, I pray now a blessing upon those listening. I pray a blessing upon their life, their families, their marriages, their homes, their businesses, their finances, their health. I speak that, Lord, in Jesus' name, a blessing over them. I pray they would be filled with your Holy Spirit today and experience you as they never have before. We give you praise for all that this time of year represents. In Jesus' name, amen.